Hello and welcome. Today I'm talking to Dr. Stuart Marsden, who is product manager at Claro Software. Claro, who also deliver text help products, provides software to help with reading and writing and much more for people with challenges in this area, in work, at home and in learning. So, for example, students. Stuart and his team turn neurodiverse user needs into amazing software. Stuart's background is as a product management professional and even a project management professional. He's a chartered engineer with a PhD in bioengineering, so he knows his onions, as we say. And today I'm talking to him because technology can be transformational when managing dyslexia and other associated conditions. But sometimes learning how to use new software and finding the time to embed it in working practice, especially if you're already stressed, frustrated and overwhelmed and running to keep up with everybody else can be challenging. So I have some general questions to ask Stuart about assistive software and how to make the most out of it. So here we go, Stuart, welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. And is your first question, what is the big deal with assistive technology? Morning, morning, Guy. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the introduction there. Um, uh, yeah, I know my onions indeed. Um, assistive technology is something I've been interested in and worked in for on and off for two, two decades or so. Um, and it used to be I worked for some uh, service called the Regional uh, Technical Aid service so a technical aid was the, the name we gave assistive technology in that particular role i've got a little bit i don't want a soapbox but i've got a b in my bonnet maybe about the word assistive technology mm, because too. it sets um it sets you apart if you're using it from people who aren't and we don't want that you know you're a learner you're a you're a worker you're a person you have needs they have needs but yours have been defined in such a way that you require assistance but you, I, I would challenge you actually to name any technology that isn't assistive. That's, that, they're right. almost synonymous, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. A redundant phrase, technology is assistive. You know, that's why we build things. That, okay, you might have technology that's artistic and doesn't assist much, but you know, it has a purpose. So, you know, a pen, you're wearing glasses yourself, the assistive technology. Um, so, What's the big deal with it? Um, I think what we're in a world now where technology is everywhere. And I think it has been since we discovered fire, uh, you know, because that dictated the course of our own society's evolution. So technology is everywhere and it's all assistive. We use it for all sorts of things from the alarm that goes off in the morning um, to the nightlight that uh, sends us to sleep and the blinds that we draw to block, you know, ev doors, everything, technology everywhere. Um, so, so technology itself is a big deal, um, which naturally leads me to conclude that assistive technology is a big deal as well. Um, and what it is without, without focusing too much on the argument about able and disabled, which is another word that we really don't like. It's about using technology to, to, to level the playing field and remove any, you know, um, barriers to learning, working or achieving a task that some people have, and that might be because of dyslexia, um, you know, um, but it might not be. It might be because, you know, um, you, you might need a, a special pair of scissors because you're left-handed, because the right-handed scissors are just a little bit clunky. That's doesn't mean you shouldn't use scissors or learn to use them the same way as everybody else. Get a pair of scissors that work for you. So that's what we have, that's, that's assistive technology. It's solutions to problems um, that might be faced more by certain people with certain needs. It's um, th the thing with technology, isn't it? It is often a tool, isn't it? Because my phone has just gone off, for example. Phones are absolutely jam packed, aren't they, with technology? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we use them to make our everyday life easier, don't we? For communication, for example, in simple terms of just you know, it's easier to ring someone up than to drive 200 miles to ask them, you know, what you wanted to ask them. And um, so and that's my feeling about assistive technology as well. It's about the tools, isn't it? And it's about the things that make life easier. And uh, as an 
older person myself, for example, I have embraced assistive technology for my mountain biking pursuit. So I've got an electric bike and um, that helps me keep up with those people <laughs> whose legs are stronger and better. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's absolutely, isn't it, about having that mindset about looking for tools which are gonna help you do what you've got to do most efficiently. And, yeah. and I think some people feel that possibly, oh, if I have this stuff, it gives me, maybe it's gonna give me an unfair advantage. And you get that kind of in the student um, or education sector to a certain extent you know why should yeah. i have this help you know why shouldn't i just carry on struggling and um and i think it's that's partly to do isn't it with people's understanding and lack of understanding of the um complicated impacts of things like dyslexia and adhd and and so on and so forth sure, yeah. but um yeah. You know, we wouldn't be doing this without technology. Really. There's so much about perspective, perception, um, you know, stigma, uh, uh, the way that you're introduced to certain tools um, can can be a big difference. Um, if if you're um, if a piece of AT is presented, assistive technology is presented to you in a way that says you have these needs and you're not quite as capable as peers of yours because you have these needs and we've got these special things just for you that will help you that, that's one way to deliver it the other thing is the other way and another way is to say you've got these different ways of thinking so you have these great strengths but you have you know demonstrable you know you're lacking in some other areas because of this so what we need what we want to do is just you know give you something that can help you out with these things so you can focus on your strength a little bit more and that's exactly the same offer we're going to give you exactly the same solutions it's just you know how you you know how, how they're introduced to you just as a concept and we, we you know we, we use words like disabled and assistive too much um, and you know the the the, the, the thing with the, the whole technology is as you exactly just as you said it's things that we can use to help us achieve uh, so it's more about benefits than fancy features we like to talk about benefits what benefits does it bring but if you're not as i don't know it's a question of how self-aware you are as well because if, if you're self-aware and you accept and embrace your dyslexia for example then you're much more willing to understand what benefits are going to be brought to you so it's a very much an individual thing it is it is and um the interesting thing that I find is that I'm not dyslexic, but I use dictation software and screen reading software. And one of the things I like about some of the um, speech to text software is that it will highlight the text as you are, as it is reading it. So I've got that, you know, I can hear it, I can see it, I'm being focused on it. I can have the screen masking as well if I want. These are things that actually help me um, focus on doing that work. Because we are in worlds now, aren't we, where there are millions of distractions. And I know over the past couple of years with COVID, people haven't been working in open plan offices, but which are legendarily distractive. Yeah. But all those things are really helpful. And so the I think the thing with technology is it's not just simplistic oh it does this or it does that there are a kind of multiplicity aren't there of tools out there oh yes so many options for everyone yeah so yeah. what's the secret to getting the best out of technology if you have dyslexia for example i think it that's a, it's a fantastic question i think about that a lot your daily because uh, it's, it's it's what i do and it's the, the but I want to go back to this, what I said earlier about benefits and self-awareness. And, you know, I think the first step is identifying that need it, that you have. And that, that sounds, it might sound trivial, like you, you've got a chore to do. Um, you need to get, you need to travel 20 miles. Then you start to think of solutions to, to, to that need. Do I catch a train? Do I get a lift? Do I walk? Do I get a, on my uh, electric mountain bike? Um, you know, you know, you think about solutions to that need, but you need to first have 
clarity on what that need is. With something like going to university with dyslexia or, or getting a, a, a job, you know, a certain type of role where you're at a computer perhaps with, with, with a reading impairment, or you might have a, another kind of you know, visual impairment or you know, other sort of neurodiversity or, or, or mental health um, and, or a physical disability. There's all sorts of reasons or that you, all sorts of reasons for you to have a, a need. English might be a second language. Um, and yeah, that's a need, you know, and there's technology to help you with all of those things. But the first step is identifying that need and acknowledging and recognizing and respecting that need. You know, you're not going to cure dyslexia, but you don't have to walk through your life struggling to read because there are things that are there to help you. Um, so I think the secret, as you put it, the secret is uh, it's not just so simple as ah, I, I understand myself and I have this need. It's the investment. It's the investment in that learning curve. So you had to learn to ride a bike in order to get the benefits of the bike that you mentioned. You know, I, I had to learn to touch type. I didn't have to, but I did, and it took me time. But after that, I could touch type. So ever since then, I've been more productive. You know, um, learning the, the, deg the degree that you may or may not have gone to study or the that you might be going to do or the promotion that you're seeking or the, the task that you're undertaking. You're doing it for a reason to achieve or to, to be productive. And it might just be to get paid at the end of the day. I don't know what your motivations are, but there are always ways to improve. Um, and that, that's the secret. I, I want to achieve something at work. Let's say I want to um, manage a project um, and, it, and it's a new team and it's a new project and it's very exciting, but uh, I feel I've not got the right experience or it's a new type of project and I'm a little bit, what do I go and do? I can, I've got choices and everyone's got choices like this. You can either just crack on and get through it, which is fine, or you can go away, spend a bit of time, upskill, learn, prepare yourself, get the tools you need, understand the benefits they will bring, and then the, the rest of that process will be, you know, easier for you and allow you to achieve so i think the secret is that for fear of repeating myself i think it's understanding the needs and putting that time in up front investing that time in learning how to use the things that are available to you yeah yeah no i think 100 percent. and mm -hmm. um so that means doesn't it that it um well firstly if you've been through a workplace needs assessment and you have technology recommended and coaching too I reckon it's worthwhile having both of those things because some people hmm. they're so busy aren't they they think how am I going to fit all this into my working week so and similarly students you know they sometimes don't see the obvious rewards so um, I think they go together quite well because of that uh, kind of need to develop self-awareness to be sure isn't it to understand yourself how can I use these tools and often having a chance to turn ideas around with other people and maybe hear what other people's experiences um, are like is useful mm. so the uh, which brings me on to my next question is how would you uh, define the rewards of using technology I think the, the rewards really relate again to the needs that you have it's productivity, it's efficiency, it's confidence. Um, it's we are leveling the playing field as well. So if back to the academic scenario, you are being judged on your ability to write um, an essay or to deliver a PowerPoint presentation or a slideshow, um, or uh, you might be creating um, a, an art, a piece of art, or and you're going to be judged on that against peers compared and compared with others. And I think the, the rewards are that any weird random barrier you might have can be offset. So you can focus on actually achieving the tasks instead of overcoming your barriers. So someone said to me, um, right or wrong, I don't really have a view necessarily on this, but they said to me, and they were talking about just, just learning in general in an academic university sort of setting, but it applies to life. They said that learning to learn builds resilience. You know, just, just the process of learning to learn, it's tough. There are challenges, there are barriers to overcome. If you have extra barriers, you're already pretty resilient though, I think. So the extra barriers of learning to learn 
on top of the barriers you already have can be can be prohibitive sometimes they can stop you from achieving they can stop you from putting yourself forward they can stop you from applying for this job or this course or stop you from reaching out for an opportunity because you feel you don't have the capability that's that's the, the reward is that we can offer the AT AT people like us we can offer the coaching the solutions and these tools that you can use to get past that and so you can achieve there's nothing nothing to stop you from achieving exactly the same way as anyone else would um dyslexia is a reason not an excuse you know um and so yeah i think it's just technology is amazing figure out what your needs are learn to use the stuff that can help you and then embrace it you know and then go off and achieve i think you're absolutely right isn't it because <laughs> if you can um if you could get the technology to work so that means working um often with the IT department if you're in the workplace isn't it or yeah lots of software we're and talking about here yeah there's lots of yeah it's, yeah but because it, it takes a bit of perseverance isn't it you got to make sure you got to you know you got to remember to use it you've got to have the training you've got to practice it you've got to think about how am i going to use this stuff what are these tools going to be effective doing so it takes a bit of perseverance and when you're kind of under the cosh sometimes that um because it's an extra layer of stuff to do isn't it that can fall by the wayside mm, and feels like more back. work yeah 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 and people go back to kind of emergency survival mode which is just put in more hours and yeah. the cost of that in my experience of talking to people is it's just exhausting mm. and you know it, everything takes so long so it's to me it's a, if you can persevere and hopefully with the support of the people around you get to a point where you can use technology as the effective tool i mean just in the olden days and you know, when phones first came out we were all struggling you know how how do you <laughs> do a text message how do you do email on your phone how do you do all this stuff but we persevered because we could see the benefits and for people with dyslexia often they might be the only person where they work who's got this stuff so it can be challenging but there's a social pull isn't there with the text messages when they were all brand new yeah, everyone yeah. was doing it so you wanted to join in you wanted to understand this and you were you were missing fomo as they say these days yeah, yeah. you know you need to learn this stuff but there was certain maybe generational things some people are i'm not text messaging i don't need text messaging we you know we use pigeons when i was a lad um so it's different with assistive technology because you might be the only person in the room that's using it um so that that certainly is a barrier it quite can be yeah but the rewards aren't they are that you save energy you do stuff a lot quicker all that reading and writing stuff that takes so long can be done quicker you may not be as quick as someone without dyslexia but it's going to give you back some time and you um, do have strengths as well absolutely um, you know different ways of thinking the big picture the creativity that often comes with dyslexia is is more than enough usually or often to offset this imp impediment um i think well, that, what what you're saying is work smart not hard exactly beautifully put so lyrical but and it is that isn't it because you know we all want to um where we get our job satisfaction from is being creative isn't it is coming up with ideas and if you drag down by the drudgery of the reading and writing you're not in a great place to think creatively so if you can if you've got technology to make those tedious tasks and often you know they are admin related aren't they kind of stuff it's not the joy of the job so the technology gives you that space doesn't it to really do the the bit that you signed up for you know whether it's a course yeah. or work it gives you that platform i think yeah it does it does it's the the, the sort of from from here to there journey of of achieving something whatever it is like you said work or a home or a hobby you know you 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 get the tools or various tools you try different things you don't know you don't know at that stage what's going to work for you until you find out really get in there and look, try to learn it and embrace stuff like coaching and um help, even help manuals and practice uh, making perfect and you never bought you you're not born with 
the English language or you're not born with the ability to, to walk, you're not born with the ability to touch type or, or chop an onion really fast or whatever skill yeah, yeah. you're proud of, um, you learn them. And then you can look back and go, wow, I remember a day where I couldn't do that. Uh, but now I can. I wonder what else is in my future. Yes, yes. So um, the uh, can you tell us a bit about what you do? Because you're obviously very insightful and have a very positive angle on these things. So what do you actually do in your day job? I... I... <laughs> spend a lot of my time suffering from imposter syndrome, I think, uh, <laughs> because I'm a neurotypical. No. Um, um, I, I, I make things and work with people who are amazing at making things uh, to bring benefits to those with dyslexia or reading impairment or uh, other neurodiversities like ADHD and ADD and um, uh, autism and mental health conditions. And I don't really suffer from many of those things or have any, uh, any of those things. So imposter syndrome uh, is is a, a one way of putting it, but that's not that sounds negative. It's not. A big part of my job is, uh, so I'm a product manager, which means everything from coming up with new ideas and listening to users about things that they think could exist that don't exist, and then creating those innovation, design, and building these products and getting them out there all the way through to once they're out there, listening to the users again about how can we make them better, um, and that that's what I do. Um, but a lot of a lot of it is empathy. It's um, a skill that comes to different people in different ways in different contexts. Um, and for me, by empathy, I mean a big part of my job is trying to put myself into your shoes if you're a user of our products to try to understand what your pains and gains are when you use a certain piece of AT. It's not all empathy, of course. I can actually just talk to you. You know, you tell me what your needs are. I don't need to pretend then, but it's, it's really a fascinating and it's a daily challenge that I really enjoy. Just trying to understand we've got these options. We've only got a certain amount of resource in terms of the team to build this product or that one. What do we do next? What's the most important thing for us to build next or a bug for us to fix or feature for us to implement or benefit for us to bring? And it's brilliant. It's brilliant. That's what we do. So that's my job, prioritizing new features and listening to users or pretending to be them. Yeah. Well, that's, it's great to know, isn't it, that there's a kind of interactive process going on so that, because a lot of people have Claro products, don't they, and textile yeah. products. There's a lot of it about. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And I would, you know, possibly suggest that not everyone is getting the most out of it as they can so and i you know i would encourage people to you know if they haven't if they're just using it now and again or not it's just to have a another surge of enthusiasm because i know there's lots of there are loads of videos aren't there on youtube about how these products work how mm -hmm. to get the best out of them you know yeah. it really is uh, you have to force yourself sometimes don't you you have to force yourself to pick up this new skill yeah, um, yeah. You, you, you buy a book to learn to do something and it might collect dust and then you'll pick it up again. And if you engage with that, you, you, you'll know the benefits because you bought that book for a reason. The, the same with uh, myself and a few sort of pieces of software that I use. Have you heard of a phrase called dog fooding? Oh, no. It's because I'm a software, I work in software, software product manager. And one phrase that comes up in software uh, design is dog fooding. I'm not sure of the origins of it, but what it essentially means is you should be using the tools that you're making. You know, because then you don't have to quite empathise so much. You actually, yeah, yeah. You, you're actually, I, I, okay, I've not got dyslexia, but I, I, I dog food at work, and I use a lot of the tools that we sell and make. So there are, uh, you might, 
I'm okay to mention a few of the tools, Guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not sort of the BBC um, copyright sort of infringement or anything like that, but there's there's Hope global um, global autocorrect is one really popular tool. It's been out for a long time. And it's still maintained and it's fantastic. And autocorrect, that's what it does. I, as I said, touch type. I might go too fast and I might spell the T E H. Global autocorrect just fixes that as I go. I know, me too. It's so good. And I, I'm I'm not, as I say repeatedly, I'm not I'm not dyslexic, but I benefit so much from global autocorrect. The the uh, as you say, Clara read and read and write, the sort of big text to speech solutions, I use all the time. It's a as you say the highlighting's brilliant. And it's another way to take the information on as well. So I'm I'm not I don't have a reading impairment. I can read and I do read, but I read a lot. The, the amount of words I must read in a typical work week and then in my evenings and millions of words. So it's nice to be able to hear content. If I'm going to walk the dog, it's not safe to read while I'm walking, but you, it's with, with a couple of clicks now, you can just have that read to you. Yeah. You know, there's no reason, apart from what we're talking about, these sort of barriers to learning this I'll just crack on using the old methods because I know it works but what if you could be put some investment in now learn what if you could do this 10 hour task in 5 hours in a few weeks time now for the rest of your life it'll take you 5 hours instead of 10 yeah yeah what, what, what are you going to do with all the extra time you've uh, made you can sleep longer or uh, take <laughs> whatever whatever it is you want to do with your time because time's time's the most precious thing we have yeah but dog fooding dog fooding I've got loads of Dictation software I use, uh, text-to-speech software, the autocorrect. The product that I talk about the most, Writing Helper, I use to construct documents. It's yeah, I'm, using, I'm using assistive technology all the time. Absolutely, and me too. And not just because, you know, it's something that we're recommending to other people. It just helps everybody, doesn't it? It helps, you know, I, the autocorrect, love it. And... You know, in addition to I use dictation, I have text to speech, I have the highlighting, but I use them for specific tasks. I don't have them for absolutely everything. And I've worked, I've taken time and I worked out, I know when I need to do it. Because if I'm going to do a dictation thing, I've got to think about it. I've got to plan it in advance. I can't just spew it out um, mm. lyrically. You know, it takes a bit of thought, slightly different way of doing it than I might just using a keyboard. So, so it's taken time to do that, you know, and I have a dictation app on my phone for when I'm walking the dog and have a brilliant idea because that's when it happens, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and also I'm listening, often listening to um, audio books on my phone. So it is, you know, there's all this stuff. We'd be crazy, wouldn't we, not to be using that? It's so, uh, the, the, we're, we were immersed in it. You, you and I. So we're take a student who's studying geography who has dyslexia. They they they're immersed in geography and their social life and their life, their families, and friends, and you know all the books they've got to read and the study they've got to do. So assistive technology isn't something that's at the forefront of their professional. Yeah, true, true. You know that it's something they'll benefit from, but they don't know that there's so much out there that you're unaware of, and it's a good thing to acknowledge that you and I are lucky because we get to play with and work with this sort of technology all the time and we can see the benefits for ourselves as neurotypical or typical whatever that means learners but i think maybe if you're if you're this geography student the first thing is or well, one of the first things is to know what's even there wouldn't it be nice if well <laughs> you can here's the but you, you don't even know to ask the question sometimes no, that is a good point, isn't it? So mm. it's about that uh, level of understanding in the kind of public domain, isn't it? So um, hopefully things like this kind of conversation will uh, improve that situation yeah. gradually. That's the point. Yeah, look so, at look at um, dictation. You mentioned dictation before. Uh, we're, we're now using it with smart speakers and navigation in our car. Yeah. So it's just entering normal society, this technology. So that something that would have been assistive technology not very long ago is now, um, hello, uh, female name, 
of a product named after a river thing. Uh, tell me what time it is. I, I use mine for a cooking timer. But yeah. I, yeah, I speak to a gadget in my kitchen on a daily basis, and it's not weird. No, no. And so, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? The more these are mainstreamed, then the more, the easier it is, the less stigma that people yeah. have. Because then you start thinking, don't you? When you run up to a problem, how can I help this? You've got more resources to draw from to think, you know. You know, I use a timer for that, so maybe I can use a timer to help me focus at work, that kind of thing. I'll do this. It helps us as well. Uh, As publishers, it helps us if it's mainstreamed. It means the technology is already more accessible, easier to use. We're not like a garage industry hacking together unique solutions to a small user group, which end up using, they end up looking like the things for the disabled. You know, but now that everything's mainstream, it's slick technology, it looks fantastic. You're not going to launch an application anymore that people look at your screen and go, oh, have you got like a visual impairment? You've got this weird piece of technology that makes you look disabled. It's it, the, the whole culture of accessibility is, is changing rapidly in the right direction as well. Well, that's good, isn't it? Because the, the more it's used, the price comes down. I used to be a support teacher for young people with visual impairment and there were gadgets and they cost an arm and a leg and you'd have to buy them before you knew whether they were going to be really effective. So that's, you know, so many barriers. So the more these things are used, the more they're bought, aren't they? So that brings the price down. It's very sad how much assistive technology of that ilk doesn't actually get used as well. Uh, because of the stigma and the learning curve you know the benefits are clear but you know when when you when you're a a teenager or you're in a a certain group and you don't want to stand out as the one with these needs you just want to you know just want to crack on and learn and you know you don't want this thing that you have to stick to your arm or your head or your computer screen and it collects dust it can collect dust often or it's something you feel like you need to go and do in isolation, you know. Some things like dictation you wouldn't do in a crowded room, <laughs> you know, uh, which makes sense, you know. You might be the only one in your workplace using a particular piece of technology, but that's, that's okay. It, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it, that... You know, you hit the nail on the head, don't you, when you said that we're immersed in it. So when you're immersed in it, you can think, oh, it's brilliant. Everybody's using it. Why aren't they using it kind of thing? And they're in a different world. So this is I'm on a great mission this year. 2022 is making a difference for people with dyslexia. And what can you do practically? So my message to people is, you know, if you work in an office with other people, you know, use dictation, use screen reader, because you can get it often, can't you, without assistive software. I know Microsoft and Apple have these things. And, um, you know, if the more mainstream it is, then the less apprehensive people will feel about using it because when someone comes along and says, oh, what are you doing? You say, oh, I'm just listening to what it's um what i've written i'm having it read back to me then if other people say oh yeah i do that all the time as well it just yeah. takes a level of pressure off because you think oh i'm just same as everybody else which is what we all want to be you don't need to be apologetic yeah. exactly yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's uh, happening all the time all technology goes through these the this sort of phase of newness and you know what what, what what you're doing there so i'm i'm just um, I'm, I'm dictating my uh, uh, Victoria sponge recipe to this uh, black cylinder on my kitchen worktop. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Six months later, everyone's, you know, can I, how did you dictate that that, that, that recipe? It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, what is it? Ta- market, market pull and technology push and all of those sort of ways of thinking. It's, it's just, I don't know, I don't want to suggest that it's the way to work. It's really every single one of us Take a hundred people in a room and count the number of ways of learning and you'll have a hundred. No yeah. two people learn in the same way. You have you might be you might use highlighter pens when you're marking up a book. You might prefer to work in a certain sitting posture, or you might you just everyone's got a slightly different sort of approaches to things. And what we do 
And the way that I want to see 80 is as, uh, we can't use IT, it's been taken, but inclusive technology, not assistive technology. Um, but it can't, you can't call it IT, we call it 80. Um, but inclusive technology is just something that anyone might be able to benefit from, like any piece of technology. And you, as a user, there's some onus on you to find these tools and find the ones that work for you. But if you don't know what questions to ask, then you might not find these things that could really transform the way you achieve things. So that's the mission, isn't it? That's what we do. That's what we're here for, raising awareness, offering these potential solutions. So, do you know, I could talk to you all day, but obviously we've got to stop. But you brought us <laughs> to a really important point, which is people need to ask, I guess, how can I do this? And you are the people who have that nuanced insight to say, you know, there's this, there's that, there's this, all these different ways of doing that job, different technology, different tools mm. to enable you to do that. So do you have a, um, is there a kind of interactive portal with Claro? Can people, how do, how would people communicate with you if they had? It, well, I'm works? very easy to find and my colleagues uh, many of them are quite easy to find that obviously the website clarosoftware.com you can jump on there and learn all sorts and you can contact me directly through there you can even book an appointment on the first if you go to the home page it's a little book, book an appointment you can put time in if you want to talk about the products or talk about your needs you get a guide from us and we'll help you find things and depending on where you are we might be talking to a, a maybe a British audience here and any UK based students going to university, there's something called the DSA and um, the disabled, I hate the word, disabled students allowance. So there are grants, same with access to work. If you're going to the workplace or moving around in the workplace, there's loads of assistance to, you know, to help you get some technology like the software we, we, we have, but as well as other things. So, um, yeah, I think there's just, I'm really excited all the time. Like yourself, it's just talking about, technology but it's always with always trying to have that inclusivity in mind rather than uh, rather than focus on the 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 disability or the assistive nature of what we're offering claro same with text help um and and lexable there's a few products with us quite quite a number of products and different solutions around there they're all all solving different needs for different people in different ways well, I would encourage people to have a look on your website. That's a, a great place to start, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. so I have to say, because we've got to stop now. Thank you so much, Stuart. It has been fascinating. You do a great job of hitting the nail on the head. I'm waffling away. You get it down to the refined point. So okay. thank you for that. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, and it's, well, it's great for people listening. And, and it's fascinating to... Um, to know isn't it that there's all this stuff around and that it really does make a difference and i've learned something on the dog fooding thing it's amazing. dog fooding yeah i need to Food go and guest. check out where that came from uh, it's a word that we use but uh, I'm, I'm not sure of its origins i'm gonna go find out that's my mission for the morning i think brilliant thank you Stuart. then it's been amazing thank you guy thank you very much for your time thank you for taking the time to watch today's video if you found this video useful then why not take a look at this one? I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.